Good afternoon, and do please welcome here to my timeline. I promised two days ago that I will share some deep topic and thoughts on God. And sometimes when one speaks especially on God, you tend to offend other people because we're all taught differently about God, even though we're speaking of the same God. We approach that God differently. One of the teachings is that I want to share here is this. Is when one comes to understand that what we receive in this world comes from two sources. And these two sources are mostly confused by either the Western mind or the Eastern mind. But nevertheless, these two sources are daily working to bring success, good health in your life. When one comes to understand that everything comes from God, the light, then one will be as an example of one eating apples. It may not be the desire rush that you expect at that moment, but it will leave with you a long time. The energy of the apple will carry you for a long time versus someone who have a chocolate cake in front of them. They expect a quick high. It's the sweetest thing they can put in their mouth, but it soon, as time goes, falls because the sugar high will run out and then the body collapse. In other words, they have a great high and then they experience darkness. So when one understand in their life that there are two sources that energy come from, then one start to appreciate. If one feels that they are the architect of their life, they're in charge of everything that's happening around them, they know it all, they're very smart, they make things happen, we know this is not from the light. We know it's from the other side. With this individual, it may take 10 seconds, 10 years, doesn't matter, but they will taste or experience darkness. And this is life. Where am I going with this? I'm going with this is this. Not everything that come with from God is a great high. But what comes from God will last a little bit longer. And so having said all of this, I would like to share there's 18 blessings or appreciation knowing that things come from God. No, I don't memorize all of them. If I was alone, I could try to see if I could attempt to say them. And if I make a mistake, I can correct myself. But because I'm not here to correct mistakes, I'm here to share with you something that I do when I wake up in the morning. In the morning when I wake up, I show some appreciation. My dear friends, I'll try to explain some of the thoughts as I read each of the blessings. Now, I want you to please understand that what I'm going to be share is not religion. It has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with life and you. This is not about religion. So even though I may be calling the names of certain individuals or countries, it has nothing to do with religion or people or race. It has to do with the nature of things. 
and I will now do begin. When I wake up in the morning, for men, they will say, Modeani. For women, it's Modaani. But here, it's not a Hebrew class, so I'm not going to read it in Hebrew. I will say, when I wake up in the morning, I said, I give thanks before you, the living and eternal King, who has returned my soul into me in compassion. And thank you and grateful for your gratefulness and faithfulness. So I'll stop there and explain it. See, when we go to sleep every night, we do experience a 6% of what is called death. Everyone that go to bed at night and fall asleep are experiencing a little bit of what death is. But when you do go to sleep, there's a big fight among your soul and the other souls about returning back into this world. And so when you consciously wake up in the morning, for those who understand and the appreciation that you did went through a hard battle last night, you call it resting, but you return back to this life. And so in that returning with appreciation, you say, I thank you, Lord, creator of the world and the universe, for allowing my soul to return back to me and giving me one more day, one more chance to be alive. I'll continue with the next one. Next one will sound really silly, but here it is. Next one is talking about washing your hand. What's so important about washing your hand? Did you know, my dear friends, that your hand is the only thing that connects to you that is not discriminated or has any discrimination in it? Your hands, you touch things, you fill things, you hold things, you carry things, carry a bag. All the other areas of you do not involve with touching. If you sit down, you're sitting on a piece of material that cover you. So you understand what I'm saying? When you're walking around, you have a socks or shoes on that's put, moving your feet from the floor. But your hand has no gloves. You're touching things. So when you wake up in the morning, the negativity of all the things that you've touched the following night, you dispel them by saying, thank you, God, who educate me that I need to wash my hands. I told you what's silly, wasn't it? But another appreciation. If it all fails, it's good hygiene that you wash your hand before you start touching food and stuff. I'll continue with the next one. And these are a little bit serious now. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who fashioned man with the wisdom and created within him many openings and many cavities. It is obvious and known before the throne of God, or glory, that if any of one of them raptured or is blocked, it will be impossible for that person to survive and stay alive. And as we stand here in front of you, God, momentarily, we want to bless you, who heal all of our flesh, and who allow all our cavities, all our organs, all the blood, our mind, to work peacefully. I told you it was a little bit serious. The next appreciation is this one. May God, the soul that you have placed in me is pure. You created it. You formed it. You breathed life into me. And you preserve it in me. You will eventually one day ask for it and take it away from me. And you will restore it to me in time to come. As long as my soul is within me, I give thanks before you, O God, the God of my fathers, the master of all work, 
Lord of all souls, blessed are you, God, who will restore all the dead people back to life. Amen to that. You're getting a bit, a little serious. But now, here we go. They may sound a little weird or strange. I'll try to explain them as I go along. First blessing. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who gives the rooster understanding to distinguish between day and night. For all those who grew up in the farm or from third world countries, you understand what a rooster is. At around 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning, the rooster will crow or announce and it's almost morning or daylight. The prayer itself is not really talking about roosters, but talking about you. Thank you, O Lord God, creator of the heaven and the earth, that you give me the understanding that I can distinguish light from darkness, good from evil. Do you get it or shall I go on? The first blessing is to have the wisdom to know, even if it looks nice, there's evilness hiding behind it. That I, my soul, may pick up the energy of either good or evil, no matter how beautiful it may look. Next blessing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who opened the eyes of the blind. My dear friends, I don't mean God is going around or I'm giving thanks to God that he goes around healing blind people. But these are the people that says, oh, my Lord God, if I had only see it coming. Oh, my God, even though I see I am blind. I thought I knew it all. But honestly, I don't. And so you're saying, thank you, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, that you open the eyes of a blind. So when we say blind, we don't mean that the person going around with a cane and a stick and they can't see. We do mean Spiritually, the eyes is open, not blind. And in that spiritual openness that some people may call the third eye, is I may sense someone or sense an event or sense anything. It's either for good or for bad. I'll continue. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who released the bond. What does that mean? You know, some people are married to some things that they do. They're tied to it. And then they start worshiping it. And then start control their life. Now they're involved in it. They cannot move away from it. So this prayer or this blessing is saying, please God, let me have the opportunity to have some, a little bit of some freedom, not to be tied down. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of the universe, king of the universe, who strengthen the people where their backs are bent. Please understand what I'm saying here are example in the English language. If I said the person was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, it means they come from a wealthy family. So if I'm saying here, thank you, Lord God, creator of the universe or king of the universe, who got the, the crooked, the back, their back is bent. They walk like this and they're, they're bow, bowed and you got them straight. You get the picture. Meaning in my soul, if I am a crook, if my intentions are bad, please, oh God, blessed are you that you give me a pure soul that is away from all of these things. That if somebody is doing bad, they stand up straight. I'll continue. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who clothes the naked. Well, think about it. Are people running around naked? No. 
To clothe the naked means the soul is exposed. The soul is ashamed. Or the soul is shamed. Blessed are you, Lord God, that you cure, you are around my soul, you hug my soul, you clothe me. It's not talking about physical clothes that you go to the store and go buy. This is not your Giorgio Armani or any of those things. This is your soul is being clothed by the Spirit of God. That you're clean. I'll continue. It's almost finished. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. You give strength to the weary. Have you seen people that says, oh, gee, Lord, you know, I just want to give up. I can't take this anymore. The struggle is too hard. So when I wake up in the morning, please, God, renew me. Give me the strength to try another day. Blessed are you, Lord, God. King of the universe, who spread forth the earth above the water. Well, we all know there's more water than land, even though the water is held by the land. But the Lord God keeps the water in its place. But what does that mean? Well, water has the elements to share. And water can take over. But there's a bond there. And even water has its limit to stay within its boundaries. Honestly, this is deeply, don't be too greedy. Don't start eyeing what your neighbor have and that's what you want to have. Stay within your bound. Love the things that you have. Stop being impressed by what others have. Don't leave their dream. Leave your dream. I'll continue. Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe, who guides the step of a man. Okay. To guide the step of a man, meaning, please be with me all day and lead me. Not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Be with me. That the places that I am are a place where your spirit is there to help me. And because you want me to be there. I'll continue. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who provide me with all my needs. Do I need to explain that? I can't. And I'll tell you why I can't. Because that's how I started before we started this is understanding where your wants and where your supply come from. And the things that you have come from this source or from the other source. I'll continue. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who guides your people with might. The word is really gibuga, meaning I may look small, but deep inside, there's an inner strength of God. It's gibuga. I'll continue. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of the universe, who crown his people with glory. Well, honestly, the word is really tifaret, meaning you, even though I could become mean, but same within me you give me where kindness is also part of me blessed are you lord god creator of the universe who did not make me a barbarian so what is a barbarian i think i will not define that definition here um the Oxford Dictionary, the Internet, Siri, or Alexia will do a better job in explaining what that means. It's almost done. Blessed are you, our Lord, King of the Universe, who did not make me a slave. Well, uh, this is not talking about the African slave trade. 
the Oriental slave, or North Africa, or Sudan, or any of this conquest and slave. It means that you do not make me where the things that I have, I start to worship them. My objects now have so much value that that's all I give interest to. I am now the slave to what I, what I used to own now owns me. And now that subject or that thing dictate my life. And I'm also afraid if I lose it, I lost my life. So thank you, Lord, you did not make me a slave. Not slave as the slave trade. That I had to explain so you will not confuse and put your own words of well, what is a slave or why they, you know, why is he thanking God that he, you know, you get it, right? Okay. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who did not make me a woman. Well, what something so stupid is that? Why will I say thank you, Lord, you did not make me a woman? No, we miss the meaning. Because women do say the same blessings that I'm saying. But they will say, thank you, Lord God, you did not make me a man. You get it? So it's not about being a man or a woman. It's the energy that you are. Whatever energy you are, you give blessing to it. That's what it means. So it has nothing to be with white hair, gray beard, uh, he's getting old, or uh, he looks like this, or it looks like that. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, my dear friends? has nothing to do with that. It is just claiming that whatever you are, thank you that you are made to be whatever you are. Continue. Almost done. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who removes sleep from my eyes and sl slumber from my eyelids. Well, we all have to go to sleep for pity's sake. Why will somebody wants to share a blessing of removing sleep from my eyes. I want to get some sleep. It's not what it means. It falls back to a few of the blessings that I said earlier about opening your eyes. You feel weary. You get tired. You don't want to go further. But this is where God encourage you, help you. But with that, also the wisdom with your eyes to see that whatever you're doing, your efforts, are paid off okay and finally almost done is saying thanks and appreciation to God that you do do respect it you listen to God's advice you stay near God and you rest assured that being near God or loving God the benefits that may God protect you. And then this goes about appreciating that whatever you learn, you pass it to your kids and your family. As blessed you, Lord God, who train us so that we can teach our kids and their four kids and our four parents and whatever we learn, we pass it down from one generation to the other with love. Blessed are you, Lord God, who has given us your wisdom, your book, your blessing. And now, normally tomorrow, when this is said, the person will close their eyes and cover their head. Because normally the priest or the Kohanim will say this blessing. But because we're not doing a prayer prayer here to where maybe I shall not say it, but I will do say it. So I will go first to the three places of God. In the first place, it says, May God bless you and save guide you. May God illuminate his countenance to you and be gracious to you. And may God turn his countenance and establish peace to you. 
So, but tomorrow, the Kuan Yin will say something like this. It will be, Yebebereka Adonai Veishmerecha, Yare Adonai Panavaleka Vahonecha, Isa Adonai Panavaleka Vayashem Leka Shalom. So the priest will say something like that with the person, you close your eyes and everything. And um, with that all said, it says, the blessings are done. These are just uh, putting icings on it as Remember that with no fixed measure or prescribed that when we leave the corpse of the edge of the field for the poor, meaning in other words, if somebody was a rich farmer, the God says, you know, I mean, take some of the stuff that is for you in the farm, but leave a little bit for the poor people to come and pick. Um, the gift of first fruits, um, Offering kindness, doing good things, studying, um, help others, share the love to God with others. And um, here will say, I hereby accept upon myself the positive commandment to always love myself. Hear what I just said, love myself. To always love my neighbors as I love myself. In other words, if I don't love myself, I will have a difficult time loving somebody else. It is super difficult to like or love anyone else if you're dissatisfied with yourself. So that's why you hear me saying, thank you, Lord God, to always love myself. So I've always loved myself first. And with plenty that is left, I can bring the love to others. My dear friends, it's almost 30 minutes of talk. I hope you do enjoy what I just said here and shared. Okay. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Assalamu alaikum to all my Muslims friends. Shalom to all my Jewish friends. And welcome to all my Christians friends. I'll be online for just a little. Peace unto you all of you guys.